Looking for a better way to get up out of bed instead of getting on the internet and checking a new hit. Get up, first shot, come strut walking. A little bit of humble, a little bit of cautious. Somewhere between like Rocky and Cosby's for the game. Nope, nope, y'all can't copy yet. Bad, moonwalking. And this here is our party. My posse's been on Broadway, and we did it all way. Chrome music. I shed my skin and put my bones into everything I record to it. And yet I'm on. Um, my favorite memory this season would have to have been winning the A South title, mostly because ever since I was a freshman, all the time during practice or in games or open gym, I'd always say to Snyder, like, I'd point at the banner, I'd be like, Snyder, look, like, we're going to have 2014 up there, my senior year, we're going to win it, we're going to do it, blah, 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 and she'd always be like, okay, Al, okay, okay. And then even though she wasn't there to celebrate it with us winning it, I knew she was proud of us, and that was the best feeling. So during the Jackson game, the first time we played them, um, I, I sat the bench for most of the game, and... <laughs> The one time, it was it was a close game, like we were tied or something, and there's like a minute left, Snyder called a timeout. And me and Morgan Henderson were behind Snyder, and I looked up in the stands and saw Nicole and Mancini videotaping for the game. And all of a sudden, like I see like Mancini like look at me and stuff, and, and we weren't like mocking anyone or anything, but we just started dancing. And me and Morgan started dancing. And like, it, it's a good thing we won that game because if we did it and we watched the film over and Snyder saw us dancing behind her, I don't think it would have been good or anything. But we ended up never watching that video. Like the first video, we don't watch the whole thing. And um, it was just a, it was a good thing we didn't watch that video. All right, well this is Gabby by the way. I'm just, I brought her up so I'm not scared. But um, I have a memory with Snyder when I was driving with her and um, we were on the bridge and you do like 60, I don't know how fast you go on a bridge, but she saw Brandon uh, ahead of her and she started speeding up on the bridge and I was like, Miss Snyder, I really don't feel comfortable doing it. She's like, just go, just go. I wanna go say hi to Brandon. So I'm like driving really, really fast. Like I'm like starting to lose a wheel and she's like, Brandon, Brandon, <laughs> and I was like, I'm just like sitting in the like driver's seat driving. I'm like, should I keep going? She, she starts talking to me. He's like, all right, get back on like the road. Like, okay. So last year during one of our games against North, uh, there was probably about two minutes left in the game, and we we're up by probably five. And I'm in the game, and I shoot a three, and it goes in. But for some reason, Sonya decides to call a timeout, and she's sitting there yelling at me. She's like, why would you take that shot? Blah blah. blah. And I'm like, well, Snyder, I made it. She goes. Yeah, well, you're lucky you made it. I'm like, Snyder, I made it. Like, don't be mad. And she's like, well, you're lucky you made it because if you didn't, that would have been really bad. I'm like, Snyder, calm down. She's like, you're lucky. Now get back out there and play. I'm like, okay, sorry. Seriously, I can't do my impression in front of all these people. Me neither. Me neither. Me neither. <laughs> You're gonna look here. You're gonna okay. talk really loud. Oh god. Really loud? Let's stall. What kind of practice? You, you're gonna practice. We'll talk loud. Alright. No. I can't. So I'm just like, you know, Ready? Do you wanna to talk to each other or talk to the camera? No, I, we can't. If we talk to each other, we're just gonna say stupid. Wait. What kind of practice? 
One time I practiced, Gucci stopped me. All right, I gotta go. Wait, where do I look? One time I practiced, me and Nicole were guarding each other, and Gucci stopped us to explain. One time in practice, me and Nicole were guarding each other, and Gucci stopped us to explain something, and Mr. Miller came from behind and whispered in my ear, and it was really funny, and we couldn't stop laughing. Probably by the middle of the season, me, Virginia, and Madison had this little thing going on called the Sisterhood of the Traveling Benches. And one day at practice, we were all shooting, and Gucci comes up to us, and he goes, So, how's the Sisterhood doing? And we were like, What? because somehow he knew that we called ourselves that. And we had a song and everything. It's pretty interesting. We're snoring, <laughs> crying. There's not a bench in a step that we won't sit. If we're winning, then we're sitting. <laughs> you know the fans can see us in a seat that's so far Turn down for what? Play time! All I do is win, 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 no matter what Got money on my mind, I can never get enough And every time I step up in the building Everybody hands go up And they stay there Won't stop now. Woo! Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the homies that ain't making them. My folks locked down. Woo! I never went nowhere. What they say in loot is back. Yeah. Blame it on that conjure. The hood call it loot and yak. Yeah. And I'm on this foolish track. So I spit my foolish flow. Woo! My hands go up and down, down. like strippers' booties go. Woo! My verses still be serving, tight like a million virgins. Yeah. Last time on a college remix, now I'm on the original version. Ah! Can't never count me out. Y'all better count me in. Got 20 this year was a uh, special year, and uh, the reason I say that is I've been with the program for a while, and when this group were incoming freshmen, we had been to the South Jersey uh, Group 4 state championship two years in a row. We didn't win it either year, but back-to-back -back years, so the program was really at a, at a nice uh, pace at that point and a nice level. And the group we had coming in uh, as freshmen, we thought, were an encouraging group and one that we could work with and maybe get back to that level but we knew that the years between there were going to be very difficult as far as trying to uh, go into the playoffs and, and, and establish a winning record and so forth and uh, we were pretty much there. Uh, I had a medical situation and I missed those two years. Uh, I guess I kind of laugh because they were the, the ones where we struggled the most and then when I came back the ship was righted and we had this group. What about the time, the time we're on the bus and um, me, Virginia Booth, were having a conversation and Miller just pulls up his Facebook and he goes, this is so my, this is my this is cousin. cousin. <laughs> One time I knocked over his like jug during practice and he looks at me, he's like, don't touch the table. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay, no. no, no. <laughs> the one time we were in JV game, he was calling a 20 second time out. He was like, 20 seconds. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because I think because I had 20 on my jersey, so he got like confused with it. And the ref was like, what are you talking about? And that oh was my god. Like, oh my goodness. What about when we asked him what was in his jug? He's like, iced tea. And it's always no, iced no, tea. No, he like explains to us how he makes it. <laughs> My favorite memory this year was when Fuji asked me and Cole and Anna to sit on the bench with varsity girls. Um, I'm glad I got to share the time with them. And I'm happy that they didn't like yell at me if I did stuff wrong. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to like think of like, so my favorite part of the season was when during one game I had three fouls going into the second half. We came back from halftime and Snyder pulled me over and she was like, Vic, if you get one more foul, you're going to sit on the bench and that's not good. So then 
the quarter starts, I go, I get in with this girl, she elbows me, I'm like, okay. So I, obviously I had to get her back, so I elbowed her back, and then they called the foul on me, like they always do. And then Sarah looked at me, she's like, that is not what I wanted you to do. And then I ended up sitting on the bench, and then it was not good. <laughs> Favorite memory from the season was either the sisterhood of the traveling bench, which consists of me, Katie, and Virginia, and the one game where Snyder was on me about trying to make an open shot, she's like, Mad, you gotta go in there, you gotta, you gotta make an open shot, you know? You gotta shoot from the outside. I go in, there's like two minutes left, I shoot from the outside, make it. She calls a timeout, she's like, Mad, that's not the time to shoot an open shot. That's not the time to realize that you have a good shot. Then I sat on the bench for the rest of the game. Wait, like how about when, no, that's, I shouldn't put that in there. I was going to say when, when Snyder threw the ball at Gabby and it hit her. I remember when the seniors, like I said, were incoming freshmen. We were in a summer league playing over in Shawnee or one of the gyms over there. And there were this group of girls that I was working with, which was the B team or the JV at that time. And there were these little bitty girls on the end of the bench. And one of them was Tierney, who was an, uh, being eighth grader that year. And then I think the other ones, there were other groups there too, and uh, that included seventh graders at the time, which was Madison and Bianca and uh, I think maybe Morgan. They, they were there. And I was just amazed that we had girls that were that young and playing against high school girls. So at that time, it clicked in my brain that uh, not only were our seniors a good group, but they had people behind them that potentially could make them uh, right back where we wanted to be. Okay, so usually the girls games don't really have a lot of fans. So when the passing of Snyder happened, like our first game back, we actually had like a crowd and people cheering for us and just the feeling of running out like to a crowd and it was actually really nice and like like the feeling of having like all the support of everybody like coming out to see us actually felt nice for once and then it was kind of like a one game thing and the next time the next game is back to normal. I was with Snyder the night before she passed away and we were just talking in the team room like we did every time after practice and we were just talking about field hockey this season and what she wants to do, how she wants to take us to Florida and what kind of backpacks we should get and um, you know like if anyway I would want to go back to that night and stuff and just talk with her and just say how much I thank her for everything she's done for me and everything she's taught me and how many times she made me cry and but everything she did like I knew she was helping me with everything and just I just want to thank her because I really I really never got the chance to and um, she had a part in making me the person and the athlete I am today, so I'll thank her every day for that. Um, our last field hockey game of the season, we played at Shawnee in the state game. We got killed, and I went up to Snyder, and I was like, Snyder, like, can you believe this? We got one season left, because I played seven whole seasons for her, and she looked at me and was like, Al, this is going to be the best one yet. And even though she was only there for half of it, she was right. So our first practice back, after when we decided to come back and play again after Snyder passed, uh, it was really hard, but in the back of everyone's minds, we all agreed that we heard her going, quit your pouting, like she always said. So that made it a little bit easier. All right, so it was like the third practice of the season. We were in this trail where you would post up on the block and make a move, and I went to go post up, and I looked down for one second, and Snyder pegged the ball at my face, and my eyes started to like swell shut, and like I couldn't see anything. And she was like, oh, Jesus Christ, Gab, what did you do? And I was like, nothing, nothing, and I tried to do it like three more times, I couldn't see, and I don't even think she said sorry. And so, I like sat up for five minutes, and I still couldn't see, and she was like, are you all right to play? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. So I think like for the whole practice, I couldn't see out of my left eye, but like I still played anyway. Okay, so I expected my freshman season to be a lot and a lot of bench. And it is a lot of bench, but I do get to play sometimes. And I really like the times that I do get to play, because it just feels so good, like, being a freshman and being able to be out there and stuff. But 90% of the time it's bench. 
So if I could say something else, I would say, Snyder, I finally got a girl to retaliate on me instead of me getting called for a foul. She got called for a foul. And as it turned out, this group was a special group. Uh, we won a lot of close games. They ended up with a 22 and five record, which is one of the best records that that Southern girls program has had. I know it ranks up there pretty high. And, uh, and with everything that we had been through and so forth, it was just a real neat bonding with this team. And, and I can always, again, think back to where it began, which was, uh, you know, six years earlier in that summer gym over in Shawnee, and, and it came to fruition. So that was kind of neat. My favorite Mr. Miller memory. We were on the bus. I forget what game we were going to or coming home from, and Miller's sitting in, his, in the seat reading his newspaper, and someone was like, hey, T. Mills, and he looks up and his little, whatever his state in his accent goes, T. Mills, that's a rapper. <laughs> so one day at practice, I was like dribbling the basketball, and I look over and Mr. Miller's like, ball. So I was like, okay. So I go to throw him the ball, and like, it just like bounces off his stomach and goes like completely across the gym. And yeah. And he doesn't even acknowledge it though, <laughs> he just stands there. Yeah, so then I'm like running across the gym getting the ball and then Mr. Miller turns around and he goes, ball. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alright, I have one quick story about Madison Ski. One day we were at practice and we were all like playing defense and offense and she was like, Miss Snyder was talking or something. I look over at Madison and she's like, like this, and like looking down at her muscles and then she realized I was staring at her and I was like, what are you doing? She's like, I'm just looking at how much more jacked I am and then she was like, you know, looking at her muscles. And that's it. It ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place, and I don't care how tough you are, it will beat you to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Pain is temporary. It may last for a minute, or an hour, or a day, or even a year, but eventually it will subside, and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. The margin for error is so small, I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. You got a dream, you got to protect it. People can't do something themselves, they want to tell you you can't. Want something? Go get it. Period. Don't be afraid to fail. You can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You have to believe that something different can happen. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. That most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Deep down, dig deep down, ask yourselves, who do you want to be? Figuring out for yourselves what makes you happy, no matter how crazy it may sound to the people. Make a choice, right? You just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. To be able at any moment to sacrifice what you are for what you will become. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. If you are not making someone else's life better, then you're wasting your time. Don't cry to give up, cry to keep going. Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt. Get a reward from it. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna show you how great I am. Every coach has their favorite saying, and we all know Bucci's. Value the basketball. 